be successful in the App Store, you have to know what exactly customers are looking for, what they need in your application. Steve Jobs said something like among the lines about that customers don't know what they need until you show them the product. But I don't think that applies to your average app in the App Store. It's better to get feedback from customers and as sooner you get this feedback from customers, the better for your product. Usually customers know exactly what features they need and missing functionality could be a reason to choose your competitor's app instead of your application. So that's one thing. And yeah, also I'm not saying that you should uh, implement everything, uh, each and every feature that uh, customers are asking. No, that is kind of uh, <laughs> way to fail. Do not do that, but it's good to have as much feedback from customers as possible, especially on early stages of your product. In the current subscription market, you are interested to have your customers as happy as possible because obviously customers are paying to you every month. With one-time purchases, that was just important to get them by that version once, to have kind of good a landing page to get that click on purchase and after that yeah sure you'd still need good ratings and so on but you should always care about the next customer you know sure it's good to have customers happy in that case as well but only next new customer will bring you money in subscription app business it's different as soon as you got customer you would like to keep it and keep it happy as long as possible because every month customer is paying or every year customer is paying so I think that's win-win. How to get that feedback? Good question, right? <laughs> I have feedback submission form in each of my applications but very few customers are doing that. Therefore I implemented Wishkit which is kind of tool which helps to collect users feedback. I did that on live stream. Wishkit dependency. Adding that. Here it is. I'm thinking about putting it somewhere in settings, probably. I have feedback that is just email form that will not work here. I will add that now on the top of support kind of list. Configuration, hide command controls. We will need to hide that. Let's rebuild. Yeah, that's actually super easy to implement. Yeah, now it looks nice. No padding is perfect. Coffee is ready. <laughs> and I implemented that wish kit in two of my applications. I released it both in the App Store. And let's go and check my wish kit dashboard. So yeah, it's very, very interesting to see how current users are using wish kit in the application. How much feature requests do we have, right? So if I'm looking on Habit Tracker, I have four features approved. I was one who added first two feature requests in both applications just to make it easier to users to vote on them. And if I'm looking on my freediving application, I have four feature requests here as well. Not so many, right? And if I'm looking into statistics, I see that I got just 30 views on that kind of feature request screen for freediving application and 25 for habit tracking application. So from statistics, we can see that only tiny part of users are really kind of going to the feature request screen and asking for new features or voting on existing feature requests. So it works, but we need to improve that. Therefore, we will implement TipKit. That should help. I hope so. Tips are available in iOS 17 or yeah, that's fine. Let's add version check if available, if not available, just ignore. That could be good, probably add here also if dev to do not mess up if debug. So this will help to avoid situations when I forgot to comment out test code and run it in production. So if debug and end if basically do just that. Basically I need something like that structure we don't need preview swift u swift ui is needed and that's what i don't like in swift ui quite often we have wrong error messages it's not about that protocol it's about tip kits 
tipkits are not supported in the iOS 15. So that's totally wrong error message. That should be... Let's go with Aviable, but not iOS 15, but iOS 17. Yeah, pop over tip here it is. Like that. Ah, we need import tip kit first, of course. Normally, if I'm supporting iOS 17 only, then I should define the tip, like it is defined here, like this tip. Then I have to define kind of local variable for that and then I can just show it like that. Okay, good. And here we have that unavailable in iOS 15 error, exactly, as expected. It works, but I I will not say it's kind of <laughs> very helpful tip, right? I don't know if we have light bulb in SF symbols, but probably we have. Let's try. Oh, it's kind of it kind of works, but eh, not nicely. Okay, let's try to run it again. Oh, it's better. Future tips. Let's see what kind of modifiers we can add. There was some arrow. Action. I don't need action, but I need arrow. Arrow should be on top, probably, right? Kind of to show to the mm, function a bow. Let's try how that will looks like. Oh, here it is, that arrow. Kind of barely visible. Yeah, I don't know. Try to move it. I will take, I will say arrow on the bottom and then future request will go here. Let's say about the, about the button. Hmm. Let's see how that will look like. I think it's okay -ish actually. Yeah, increasing target to iOS 17, it's not bad idea, but just for this one thing that feels little bit, a little bit too much and a little bit too early. Currently, this application running on iOS 15, that's, eh, it's, it should be iOS 16 something already, you know, because who uses, who is using iOS 15, but iOS 17 is a little bit too early. Let's see. Yeah, that's a valid question, totally, but iOS 17 currently is only 20%, 25%, whatever. So, see, at least 30% are still on 16.6. .6. That's still bigger than everything else. Done, uploaded. Submit for app review. Let's go. Item submitted. Okay, we are waiting for review. Two thousand years later. So, new feature is released and available in the App Store. And yes, that will impact only about thirty percent of the users, maybe even less, which are on iOS seventeen. But if I'm looking in statistics, I see that I am getting more views. So it was. 10 views November 9. Today, November 10 is today, we have again 10 views. I don't have more feature requests, but I have more votes on them and more users basically see the screen, which is amazing. So next step, basically, I'm moving those feature request ideas, which I'm planning to implement. I'm moving those into my Notion template for project management and I will start on implementation for them. Okay, I am kind of happy with that result, but I have to say that even with such great tools like Wishkit and Tipkit as well, you have to iterate quickly on your ideas to see which works and which not, to do not waste time on projects which don't have perspective. Yeah, if you need help with that, check out that video with 30 days development sprints, how to get from idea to MVP.